Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. It was a big week for harvest, especially with soybeans. Many growers have finished up the April and early May beans and are now on to the late May and June beans. Yields continue to ping pong all over. In the areas where the August rain fell on the early planted beans, we continue to see yields in the mid-70s. Seeing some field averages in the mid 80s, and we got a few field averages coming in over 90 bushel. As we move to the late May and early June planted beans, while the yields continue to ping pong around, as well as de again depending on where the rain fell, many are reporting though a drop in yield from 5 to as much as 20 bushel compared to their April beans getting a lot more reports of the 45 to 55 bushel beans coming in out of the dry area. The main cause here is small bean size. As we watch this unfold, I do believe it'll have more to do with the August rain and bean maturity. Where were you when you ran out of water, basically? Reports coming in on corn look to be going the other way. Guys are reporting the May corn may be 20 to 40 bushel better than their April corn. Even had a field of June corn at 245 bushel, while the same farm had April corn at 220. Reports of this corn dropping more than a point per day in moisture this past week. Low humidities and winds are moving this thing along fast. That will help with the drying bill. It will also take away some of the quality of the stock, so let's stay on top of stock quality. We've had a number of growers complaining about the invisible loss or the hidden shrink. Uh, they, they're seeing as they left these fields to cut beans or coming back now two weeks later to finish, I notice a considerable drop or loss in yield. Now we believe in the invisible shrink or the invisible loss. It's real. But as you find these yield drops, you do need to check for your harvest loss differences as well. 17% corn will have more header loss than 25-27% corn. Subtract that difference in field loss from your drop in yield and the rest will be your invisible yield loss. We're seeing the scorched edge effect showing up in the drier areas. The scorched edge effect will show up on your south and west boundaries of a cornfield when it's next to open areas or bean fields. The prevailing winds will drive up the ET rates in those outside rows, causing extra stress if the water is short. As we'll cover in this winter's meeting, this year's August ET rates were higher than the ET rates in 2012 in August. These high ET rates the ones that killed the corn on the light ground as well as the soybeans is also what's making the edge scorching show up. Now in areas where you got rain in August, this higher ET rate will have the opposite effect, creating higher yields. With a grower this week that was seeing 340 bushel corn on that outside pass, that gets you pretty excited. But then it drops back to 240 when you get out in the field, a little depressing. Seed corn yields have been good based on reports from our seed growers. That should be good for our seed supply next spring. Some of the soybean seed growers were disappointed when they lost their seed premiums and or got fields rejected for bean damage done by the bean leaf beetle. Looking at some of these seed samples, I think we probably should have sprayed more beetles. On the plot front, things have been moving along at a high rate of speed, especially in soybeans. Matt out in Iowa, where the rain was timely, sent in their scale bean plot yields, where they planted a 1.8 maturity up through a 3.1. These beans were planted in April, and they did it with and without starter fertilizer and with and without fungicide. The 1.8s uh, yielded at 86.9 bushel. The 2.1s went at 83.3. The two eights were at 93.2 bushel, and the three ones were at 88 bushel. 
They did a starter fertilizer plot in these maturities as well, and it ranged from a 2.8 bushel gain to a 4 bushel loss, with the average being a loss of 1 bushel to starter fertilizer. They did a fungicide insecticide plot on them as well, and it ranged from a 1.8 bushel gain to 11 bushel gain, averaging 5.6 bushel. So it'll be interesting to dissect these maturities and how they responded to fungicide. These good beans will make it easier for Matt uh, to take the corn that he had to disc down. Here locally, we've taken out seven fungicide plots on soybeans that look to average around 1.5 bushel. Ray sent in his fungicide plots from Ohio, where yields gains range from a bushel and a half to three and a half bushel. We've harvested two row spacing population plots in Dewitt County, populations from 120 to 160. They did not change the yield at all. Uh, basically, the yields are in that 75 bushel range. We also did the same populations, 30s versus 15s, and population or row spacing did not change yields. They were flat at 75 bushel for the most part. What did change the yield was the Alevo seed treatment. Uh, it bumped yields 5.3 bushel. Both of these plots were planted in April. One of these plots had a starter plot in it as well and yields went from one and a half bushel gain to 1.6 bushel loss. In a third plot near Wapello, we also did 120,000 to 180,000 population in both 15s and 30 inch rows. Here too these beans were 70 bushel and population and row spacing did not change yield. This field also had a starter plot in it, and we did see a response from a half a bushel up to three and a quarter bushels. We took out two bean plots in Livingston County, uh, where we planted no-till and strip-till in April. One of these plots, the no-till was 76 bushel, and the strip-till was 73. In the other, no-till was 75, strip-till was 73. This was an interesting plot because the strip-till beans were up when we got the May 10th freeze. One-third of the strip-till stem was either killed or damaged by the freeze. The no-till beans weren't up when the froze came through. Now this stem loss was visible at harvest, but those frozen strip-till beans were within two and a half bushel uh, of the no-till beans that didn't get frozen. That was kind of interesting. Here at the office, we finished our bean harvest. We planted bean maturities at 2-4 to 4-1 on April 14th, and then we planted them again on June 1st. With the April planted beans, the 2-4s went 79 bushel, the 2-9s went 83 bushel, the 3-5s went 84 bushel, and the 4-1s went 80 and a half bushel. They were planted again on June 1st, and we harvest those. The four ones dropped 20 bushel from April to June. Again, I think the frost or the that we had here in October may have played part of that. The three fives dropped 16 bushel from April to June. The two nines dropped 12 bushel. The two fours dropped 10 bushel. Now again, at 10 bushel, there are 69 bushel beans, but it's amazing how many guys are calling in frustrated with 65 to 75 bushel beans when just four or five years ago we'd have thought we hit a home run there. In many of these plots, I think we had the beans but didn't get the rain in time to finish filling the pots. Water became the thing that leveled things out. Now, these are coarse numbers from these plots. We'll be dissecting them down to the yield zone level by the time you see them this winter as we take a deep dive into all these numbers. You guys are doing a good job of calling in ahead of the plot harvest for the plot team to keep things scheduled, so keep that up. Katie reports uh, some of you are not doing as well calling in fields as they get harvested. She's probably going to be calling some of you to check on your harvest. So take some time at the end of the day, shoot us an email or a text, let us know what you got done, uh, and then she won't have to call you. Crews are doing a great job of standing on top of those combines, so keep us up to date and we'll take care of it. To stay up to date, 
Check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.